you know, I always say the, there are four key points. So at high point, I think don't lose your head. At low point, don't lose your heart. At correction point, don't lose your guts. At breaking point, never lose your spirit. My name is Ho Kwon Ping. I'm defined primarily as a grandfather first, and then in my other capacities, being chairman of Bantry Hotels and Resorts. My name is Jamie Lim, and I'm the second generation of the business Scantique. Scantique is a brand started by my father. Scantique itself, we focus on Scandinavian design teak furniture. My name is Ron Sim. I'm the founder of Osim. That's back in 1979, when I was 20 years old. By next year, 2024, April, it'll be 45 years. Success cannot be just about money. All right, I think achieving uh, monetary uh, achievement is important uh, because that's uh, what that drives you realistically. But I think building a legacy is equally important. I define success on what you have achieved when you are in that big wooden case. Are you that mother you wanted to be? Are your children there? Are you that wife or friend that you said you wanted to be and they are there? Have you really made an impact with the business and the brand? Uh, I, I feel that that is the final report card. You shouldn't be asking me. You should ask my colleagues. Um, okay, a relatively impartial one. Negative sides, impatient. The positive side is never bear a grudge. And I'm never personal. It's about the job. It's about the mission. I think I can make them feel that we, we are all part of a larger journey where we are together. If you give orders to people that will follow you, that's fine. You can get things done. But if you inspire people to believe in what you're doing, so that even if you're no longer there, they'll do it of their own accord, that I think is true leadership. And that's what I aspire for, though I don't always achieve it. I see myself as a, a collaborative leader, but I will still make the tough decisions and I will still be responsible for the tough decisions. But I'm a, a, a firm believer that there is no perfect person, but we can have a perfect team. I mean, to me, it's always been, what do you really want to build? How much do you believe in it? And are you prepared to run that journey? Entrepreneurship is about two things to me. Huh? It's about resourcefulness and resilience but resourcefulness with or without resources. Resilient by getting up from every fall or each fall that you come, that comes along. So that must be a very much a mindset thing that you have to prepare yourself. Because you will fear, you will face situation, all right? It's not going to be easy. If you want to win, prepare to lose, right? So every failure, every humiliation that you meet, shouldn't drive you down. That should add up to the strength of your, of your cap character, of your determination to achieve what you want. Family business can be both the most fulfilling and exciting venture, and it can be simultaneously the most bitter and divisive venture family can do. And the main reason is because emotions and business are combined. So I've always said the main thing in a family business is to, is to build the love and the trust and to externalize the tensions, sometimes even through uh, outside uh, counselors. So as a second gen, I bring trouble to the company, challenging status quo, stirring the pot that you know, sometimes I think parents have a success formula and a second gen comes in, seeing the world and begin to go, hey, I think this is a great idea. Hey, I would like to do this and do that. So while we bring trouble and while we stir the pot, I believe that um, iron sharpens iron and together we just bring stronger synergy into bettering the business. Take the experience your parents had because you are in the business I'm sure because it's successful and therefore learn the success but then you know reinterpret that, reinvent yourself with it. 
I think if, you, if anyone who's successful is honest about it, they realize that success is a combination of timing, some degree of skill, and some degree of luck. The analogy I've given to you is of surfing. And I don't surf, but I, I love to watch people surfing. And you'll see when people surf out there, they wait for a wave to come. The wave will come, they try to get on it, and then it's a wrong wave, it passes by, they wait again. So that's kind of like business. You're always waiting for something good to happen. Then suddenly the wave comes, it's the right time, it's the right moment. You've got some, some skills, but you're not necessarily the most skillful surfer. The more skillful surfer could be next to you, but the wave didn't catch. And then there is that one moment you got the right wave and that wave takes you all the way into the shore. So when that wave takes you into the shore, you better recognize that you have some skill, you had a lot of luck, and you also had the right timing because other people got on the same wave, didn't time it right. So timing, luck, some degree of skill, I think is, is so critical. And when you realize that you have humility, genuine humility, because you don't have the false humility of saying, oh, I'm not a, I'm a nobody, anybody can do it, which is not true, it's false humility. Neither is it hubris to say, look at me, I'm so successful, I'm better than other people. It gives you a right sense of who you really are and it makes you more humble and yet at the same time confident that you can be successful.